Okay, so a pleasure for me to introduce you to Vihan. Uh, Vihan, as some of you would know, um, is one of the first recipient of Cuckoo uh, Hero Award that we launched this year. So for me, it's a pleasure to host him today for the call. Uh, Vihan is 16 years old. He's a student of Sriram School and he is the founder of One Step Greener. Yes, I'm sure many of you have heard about One Step Greener. Uh, he's an avid bird watcher, wildlife photographer. He debates, uh, he's a soccer player, and he has a keen interest in current affairs as well. Uh, so he is the first and only Asian to have won the prestigious uh, Children's Climate Prize in 2019 in Sweden and the Global Social Leaders Award in UK has been awarded to him uh, among some of the other prominent awards that he has, uh, you know. So many of these awards and, uh, are for his commitment to the environment. Uh, he works, uh, his works are, function, uh, are published in many uh, magazines, uh, you know, newspapers. Uh, down to Earth, Times of India, Financial Express, Business Line, and Denak Bhaskar have, uh, you know, recognized his efforts. Uh, so today, Vihan is taking us to a place uh, where I have not been. So I'm really excited to hear his talk. And uh, let's hand the stage to him, Vihan. Thank you so much. Uh, really excited to take to travel to the Black Park National Park with you. Over to you. Yeah, so um, as Janet Aunty said that she's probably not visited this park and I, I think a lot of you have also not visited this park because it's kind of a unique um, park where if you're looking for it, you'll find it. If you're not looking for it, you'll just pass it on the highway. So it's located in Velavadar, Gujarat. So it's only about... Um, it you know it's just vast um, grassland so it's you know a lot of people are reminded of the Serengeti plains or the Mas Masai Mara plains when they go to the park for the first time there's just golden brown uh, grass all around and it's just just endless for miles but um, so it's like it's really a unique spot because it's the only grassland that's protected in India. Um, so it's situated two to three hours outside Ahmedabad. It's in the district of Bhavnagar. And the closest airport is Bhavnagar. So, and the flights, you know, you can only go to Bhavnagar through Bombay. So, um, you know, it's always better to go through Ahmedabad. So that's a two to three hour drive. So it's not very long. It's about 35 square kilometers. So it's one of the smaller parks in our country. Um, and it's, as you can see on the map as well, it's, quite tiny. Um, you wouldn't expect it to be this small, um, especially because um, of the huge amount of pop, uh, deer population as well as uh, black buck population as well as other animals that it has. Um, so it was created in 1976, which is a little later than a lot of the main um, parks because this used to be a hunting ground and I'll get back to that a little later. Um, so the best time to visit, in my opinion, is October to November, um, going on to a little bit till February, because October, um, you, from October onwards, you'll start having migratory birds come in, and you have the harriers, because it's a harrier roosting site, I'll talk about that a little later as well, and because of that, you'll have a huge amount of harriers just coming into the park, and it's really, for anyone who loves uh, raptors like me, it's, it's just amazing. So um, there are two parts to the park. Now, if you can see the map, the, all the, like, the little, the tint, the red tinted part um, is the park. So you can see there's farmland all around it. And then the park is in the middle. If you can see, there's this little highway that, that there's a little green belt that runs towards the end of it. Below that, if you can see, that area is the south side of the park. The north side has most of the mammal population, most of the grassland. And the south side has um, more of the saline plains as well as marshy plains. So this is a very, very good spot for water birds and um, flamingos, pelicans, etc. Up, 
you know the the north side of the park you have a lot more um if you if you're birding you have a lot more of the raptors you have a, a lot more of, um birds that like shrubland because simply because it's so like it's so vast raptors love that so there are a unique fact about it is that it looks like there's only one species of golden grass all throughout but there are actually 39 so that's quite interesting so so if you if you can see the picture at the bottom that shows how the vista is so you have low uh, low lying trees at the back um, you know in clusters and then you have vast grasslands there and then you have a lot of black parks so it was um f you know in the beginning uh, the private um, grasslands and the uh, herding grounds for the maharaja of bhavnagar who had um, you know who used to uh, raise his, uh, like he used to let his cattle go and graze here so it was his private grazing grounds for his royal cattle and um, he also used to hunt with his famous cheetahs now um, the black park is so fast in fact it runs at 80 kilometers an hour and it is the fifth fastest land animal and in india when cheetahs used to be there when the maharaja used to hunt the only thing that could catch a black buck was a cheetah so um that's that's quite interesting because um, once the cheetahs were done uh, then the black bucks didn't really have natural prey but we as humans are natural predators and we as humans just acted as the predators and reduced their populations exponentially so post independence um, a lot of the grassland was converted into farmland so as you can see in the map earlier as well a lot of it was just turned into um farmland so and it's really a really narrow pocket for uh, the black bucks so the government also introduced free gun license now what this did was it resulted in the population being at like 8000 strong even after excessive hunting during uh, british colonialism to come down all the way to 200 by 1966 now this was something that uh, alarmed a lot of conservationists and this led to the government 10 years later uh, officially declaring it a national park so uh, and then you know after that in 1980 i think um, uh, doubling the size of the national park so it was earlier about um, 17 um, square kilometers and it was really tiny i think it was only like some part of the north uh, north area Uh, that is now and then now they expanded it all the way to 35 and it's a very important birding site as well and it's declared such by the international bird association if i'm not mistaken so right now the population has bounced back so the black buck population is around 3500 3400 which is good but considering that um, it's all located it's all concentrated in such a small area um, the sustainability of the area is always like is something that conservationists are worried about but uh, we do we do see black buck populations moving outside into some of the farmland and getting into other protected areas as well so another thing about belavadar and what i think i recommend to anyone who goes there is that don't only do belavadar if you're going to gujarat if you're going to that certain part of gujarat do the little run of kutch do the um, do the, the there are a couple of bird sanctuaries along the way nalsar over for one do those because um there is a lot to see in this park but then after 4 to 5 to maybe even 10 days it, you know you you don't start you start seeing the same thing over and over again so for that matter i think uh, other than if you're coming only for birds because there's plenty of birds here you should move on to like seeing the wild asses in little run of kutch or going to some of the bird sanctuaries because this is a grassland so the birds will be more sharp like even in the wetland there'll be wetland birds but if you want to see um, you know like somewhat thick forests then i think like nalsar over is a huge huge lake so that's also a good option but if you go a little south and you know you start hitting the mango orchards etc over there you start seeing a lot of paradise flycatchers and a lot of the birds that like uh, the tropical surroundings so yeah so i'll talk about the mammals now um the black buck is the main antelope that they are protecting in this park um that's why its name is the black buck national park 
it is um, least concern according to the IUCN red list, but um, in the Indian, um, you know, when India created the Wildlife Protection Act, it is listed as endangered. So that really prevents hunting, exploiting of the animal. And this is the largest black bar po population center in all of the world, probably in them, like local, um, because you, you see black bucks being exported to like Texas, etc., for hunting purposes. So that is that is something I'm not going to talk about. Then their breeding season is October and February. That's why I recommended uh, October to February as a good time to go because then you can get not only the black bucks, but you can also get the harriers, uh, breeding season as well as the harriers. Then, so their jumping action, which is what a lot of wildlife photographers go to photograph, um, which I've got like, which my brother got a really good picture of, um, that, that's the pronging action of them jumping. That is something uh, that is unique to the black buck. And it really does um, lead to them evading a lot of predators. So like I said, it's the fifth fastest land animal and it can reach up to 80 kilometers an hour. So that's, that's pretty cool. And uh, the cheetah reaches 90 kilometers an hour. So then we have the Nile guy. That's, that's the biggest antelope in, um, in Asia and you see a lot of these guys just walking around solitarily in between black buck herds over there. Um, so this, this picture really stuck out to me because it looks like he's smiling. So he or she is smiling. So that was, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Sorry. This seems to be some error. Sorry about that. There's some technical difficulties. It's not loading the next page. Just give me a second. Yeah, sorry about that. There's some technical difficulty. I'm not being able to load the next page. Oh, sorry about that. Really sorry about that. You probably do a relaunch of your PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Shut it and 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 start and start again. Yeah. One sec. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. So we were at the Indian Wolf. Yeah. Can everyone see the PowerPoint? Uh, Nick, Uncle, can you just tell me if you can see the PowerPoint? Yeah, it's looking good now. So then we have the Indian Wolf. So this is the apex predator of the park, um, and it's also the primary predator. So it's this this version of the wolf. Um, so this Indian wolf, which is a descendant of the gray wolf, like if you see uh, other subspecies of wolves, they normally hunt in packs and are in packs. This is largely solitary and it just hangs out alone or in pairs along the park. So this was actually just outside the entrance. We saw this on a small uh, man-made lake that the forest department had made and he was just sitting across, uh, sitting around that. And the summer is the best time to spot the wolf if you want to spot the wolf. Even this striped hanging out. Kaira, 
Kaila, put your mic off. Uh, Vyan, you as the host can put her mic off also. Yeah, I'm not being able to do that because I'm screen sharing, but that's fine. Anyways, so summer um, is the best time to spot both this, the Indian wolf, as well as the striped hyena because it is easier for you to spot them. They also come near water holes. So that's when I went. Unfortunately, fortunately, um, I got to see the wolf and a lot of the jungle cat, but I did not uh, get to see any of the ra- many of the raptors because of the time of um, the, the year I went. Then there's the jungle cat. So it is solitary. It's elusive. You hardly see this according to guides over there. We, we ended up in three days seeing almost 10. So we, we got extremely lucky about that. But uh, like you, you can see, he was just sitting on the side of the road. He got uh, sauntered off and he, they are, they're, they're pretty cool. So that, that was interesting to see that there's a, there's a healthy rat and um, hair population if you, you know, there are so many um, being spotted. Then, um, so the, 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 the image of the striped hyena, golden jackal and the Indian fox are not by me. Uh, just putting it out there. So the striped hyena is um, also something that you can see over there in the park. And it's one of the best places to spot the sp- uh, striped hyena. Uh, even though we didn't see it, it was, it, I've, I've always wanted to see it. So the next time I go, I will probably go and see it. Uh, go solely to see it. And then we have the golden jackal, of course. Um, so I have a picture of the golden jackals. But because the grass reaches so high, you can hardly see the jackal. Um, it's just sitting inside. Then you have the Indian grey mongoose. So yeah, like I forgot to tell you about this, but there's plenty of accommodation around the park. So there are a couple of forest lodges. There's the Black Buck Lodge as well. I recommend the Black Buck Lodge just because their guides are really good and they know the park inside and out. So the, the mongoose, the Indian grey mongoose, I saw it outside the room I was staying in. So that's, that's, it's, it's amazing to see it just like walking around there. Then you have the Indian fox as well, which is very hard to see. Um, primarily nocturnal. So, you know, hardly anyone's seen it in the park. Then there are 140 different species of birds, more than 140 um, species of birds that are in the park, as well as a lot more that come as uh, migratory um, in the October, November se- uh, season. So like, for example, you have the yellow wagtail, you have the Eurasian thickney, then you have the green bee eater as well. They're all just sitting on the side of the road. So uh, they really like that area because it's a little, um, you know, there's shrubs on the sides of the road and there's just the road um, in the middle. So that's a little open. Then we have, um, you know, this spotted owlet. I just, it's, it's really a common bird, but um, this one has a character because uh, she is the only, like, as soon as you enter the park, there's this pillar and she's, she has a nest in that. So that is some, this, this spotted owlet is something that you should uh, look towards because it's almost guaranteed you'll see. Then you have, like, um, if you go to the south side of the park, then you have more of the wetlands. And that's where I saw the wire-tailed swallow. There's the um, plovers. And then you also see the common crane as well. And then raptors. So it's like an ideal spot for raptors. People go there just for raptors. And it's just because, because it's so open. If you can see, there are two raptors sitting inside the grass. Now we went in a season where the grass had grown quite significantly. The forest department, the next month or two, was going to... Um, you know, start uh, controlled fires just to get the grass a little lower uh, because it had reached really high. And if you can see, there are two like imperial eagles uh, just sitting inside the grass and you can't even see them. So that's that's just like, you know, you can just see eagles like in the, the other picture here. It's just sitting and it's very easy to spot them. Then um, you have, all of these pictures are not taken by me. So you have almost 1,500 plus harriers that come to roost in the winter months from Central Europe and Russia. Um, it, it is the world's largest roosting site for the Montagu's harrier. So if you want to see the Montagu's harrier, this is the place to come. Uh, they are predators of locusts. So now we, we're hearing about the locust outbreaks, etc. So these harriers actually help control them because the farmers also love them around the area. So 
that's why they're not opposed to having the park um and because they just decimate the locust population so there's no possible threat to uh, farms and farmland so i'll just go through the five different species of harriers that come there so there's the western marsh harrier there's a the pallid harrier um montagu's harrier pied harrier and then the hand harrier so the pied harrier is something that i really want to see i haven't seen it as yet so endangered birds so this is um one of the very good spots to see the bengal florican i haven't seen it i can't say i have there are less than 50 individuals uh you can see it jumping in the air doing its mating ritual or you know um but it's very rare to see so i i can't give any guarantees about that then there you have the hubura bustard i haven't seen it in the park but i did see it in the uae where they've done the reintroduction efforts etc so that is something else to look out for then you have this i i can i am not even going to you know attempt to, to pronounce that word stolinska i think it's the stolinska bushcat which is also endangered and is found all over the park so look out for that um and it's endemic i think to india there are also endangered vultures that you see all over india so that's also something to look out for okay so we come to our quiz section if you have your answers just put them onto the chat um then after that we'll have a two and four sessions and then after that i will tell you about the tree plantation we're doing and then after that you can ask me some questions so um the first question is when is the black buck breeding season breed so there there are two seasons so if you can just put that in the chat um i don't know how to see the chat as i am oh yeah okay sorry yeah i'll okay. probably help you um read it uh so we have many people who answered the first one you answered bhavya bhavya says october to november ishayu says october to feb kirti uh vadan ruchi have all said october to feb it's not october to feb it's october and february so that two different things um october and february are the breeding seasons for the black buck in the park yeah then you have what is the fastest the black buck can run so if you can give it in kilometers per hour that will be ideal okay so quick answer coming ishayu again first one to answer there 80 km per hour yeah correct bhavya vardhan ruchi all yeah. are saying 80 km per hour <laughs> 80 it is also said 80 that's correct um then what are the five species of harriers that visit during the migratory season so i just talked about this oh. you can name five really could us to you all five you have to name right yeah bhavya give all the names i'm waiting for someone to give all the five names together so far we have two from bhavya and two names coming in from rucha so we have pied harrier montagu and hen harrier three that people have identified right okay so i'll just give the answer now yeah and kirti said the pallid harrier as well Okay, Vedant has got the names. Yeah, Vedant, you've got all of them. No, there's no swamp there's and marsh. There's no swamp and marsh harrier that comes. Through. Now everybody is doing guesswork. <laughs> I'll just give the answer before you guys get yes. confused. 
So the first one is the Montague's Harrier. Then Montague's Harrier. Uh, then you have the Pallid Harrier. Then you have the Pied Harrier. You have the Western Marsh Harrier. And then you have the uh, you have the hen. hen. Yeah, hen Harrier. So you have these five Harriers that come to the park every migratory season. So, question: uh, Why do farmers like having the Harriers come? If you can write a one-word answer, also, yeah, Isha, okay. they eat locusts, and that is why farmers love them. And that's the answer. Yeah, farmers like having the Harriers as they feed on locusts, which act as pests for their crops. Right. Now, the sixth, fifth question. How many types of grass, golden grass, are found in the park? Ishayu and Bhavya, both of you are correct. 39 is the answer. There are 39 types of golden grass in the park. Then we come to the true and false section. So if you think it's true, then put it in the chat. If you think it's false, please put it in the chat. So the Indian black buck is the second fastest land animal. And okay, if you say it's false, then give your um, what is the correct answer as well, along with it. Yeah, Ishayu, you're correct. It is the fifth fastest. Rucha, you are also correct. It is the fifth fastest land animal, and it is not the second fastest. So that is, the statement is false. True or false? The Maharaja of Bhavnagar hunted with cheetahs. Yes, Bhavya, Rucha, Ishayu, Vardhan, all of you are correct. It is true. The park is one eighth the size of Ahmedabad. Now, I didn't talk about this, but it was on the slide. And yeah, Ishayu, if it's false, what's the correct answer? One sixth, you're correct. One sixth, it is one sixth the size of Ahmedabad. Correct. Excellent. Ishayu is really observing the slides carefully. <laughs> Okay, the park was created in 1976. Is this true or false? Yeah, this is true. Both Ishayu, Rucha, Bhavya, and Vardhan have got this correct. Yes, it was created in 1976. It was officially called a national park that time. The park is the largest roosting site for the pallid harrier. Is this true or false? Bhavya, you are correct. It is false. And it is uh, the largest roosting site, not of the Pallets Harrier, but of the Montagu's Harrier. So that is, that, is, that is the answer. And thank you for, for listening to my presentation. I am done. I will just like to tell you about this initiative. So through One Step Dino, we are doing a tree plantation, an urban tree plantation in um, the heart of the city, where we're planning to plant more than 1,000 trees, and we would love your support in that. So you can see all the how you can donate, etc., um, over there. So if you can take a screenshot, I'll leave this on screen. Um, if you have any questions, this is the time to do it. Please switch on your video and audio and ask me questions. Yeah, and I also forgot to mention that we did a planting last year where we planted more than 300 trees um, in a Miyawaki cell forest. So do we have any questions? Uh, so we had, I, have, uh, I have a question. So uh, how recent is your visit to this uh, place and how how old is this experience that you've shared with us? So I've actually gone twice. I went in 2017 and 2018, both in the summer, uh, around uh, March, April. Um, the first time I only went for a day visit, which was not really a good idea. Hardly like I went at 12, came out at like four. Don't recommend it. Second time we spent four days over there. Uh, and it was a lot of fun and we got to see a lot. So most of what the material I've talked about has come from there. Um, last year and this year, we didn't go there because last year I went to Nagarhole, Kabini. This year we went to um, 
to do about Tiger Reserve. So that's why we did this two years ago. Um, but I am planning to go if everything is fine next year as well. Um, in this, in the winter this time, so that I can see the Harriers. Fantastic. And so we should uh, we should plan a trip with the Can Club. I, I, I'm definitely keen to go. So we have some more questions coming for you. Uh, some of the cuckoos are keen to support the tree, uh, tree plantation. Uh, Vidan said that they did last year. Fabulous, Vidan. Uh, Ishayu has a question. Uh, are black barks only found in India? He is asking. So they're endemic to India. So they naturally occur in India. They are um, found a little bit in Pakistan as well. Uh, but that is mostly migratory populations. They have been exported as hunting for hunting to Texas in the US and certain other Western countries. But those are controlled populations where they, the population has increased outside India, but they're just for the purpose of hunting or, you know, trophy collecting, etc. So Yes, they, they're endemic to India, but they have gone outside India as well. Awesome. Uh, so we have Rucha who wants to contribute in planting trees. Thank you, Rucha. Thank you so much. And Nick has a question for everyone. Uh, so he's asking, the grasslands in July, August is a breeding ground of which endangered bird? That's a question from Nick Uncle to the cuckoos. Who's going to answer that? Uh, Ishayu, is that your answer? Bengal Florican? Okay. So Ishayu. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So, so any more questions? Um, and yes, Ishayu, I meant the Indian subcontinent. Sorry about that. Okay. Do you have any questions? Okay, I think uh, no questions, it seems that we have, we'll just wait another couple of minutes. Uh, so, so fabulous, um, I think we conclude uh, today's talk. Thank, uh, you. thank you so much, Vihan, that was fantastic. Uh, definitely love the idea of planning a trip to the Black Park National Park. Uh, let's hope uh, 2021 is uh, a great year, void of COVID, we can travel and explore nature. Uh, next week, we have a lot of excitement for the cuckoos. Uh, we shall have a talk by Samar on Saturday, 11 a.m. And on Sunday, we are supporting a quiz uh, and we invite all of you to participate. Uh, we'll share details of that as well. Uh, so with that, we'll conclude here. In any case, uh, anyone wants any, has any questions, doubts, you could you know, reach out to us. Uh, Vihan, something you were saying? Yeah, so Amrit has a question. I'll just answer that before we continue. Sure. So what is the difference between the male and female black buck? So if you saw in the picture, the male black buck has, um, it's, it's black all the way till its belly where it's white. Whereas uh, the female black buck is a, you know, a lightish brown. So that is the difference. And they don't have the spider-like horns like the male black buck. So the, the, I mean, um, I, I'm not sure about the exact number, but it's around 30 um, inches. That's how long their horns grow. So, yeah. And just another thing that I wanted to mention um, about the park is that it's lesser known. So a lot of people don't know about it. So most probably when you go to the park, you'll probably be the only Jeep inside the park if you go in the non uh, breeding seasons, etc. And that's, that's a unique experience in itself. Thank you for having me, Janatanti. Thank you for the opportunity, all the cuckoos. Thank you so much, Vehan. All the best, everyone. Uh, with this, we conclude. Bye-bye. Have a great weekend ahead.